Hi there, welcome to Alpine Bravo. My name is Brendan and this is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we'll be carrying on with our series of tutorials on how to fly the Dare Kodiak 100 by Simulator Studio. And this video will be covering the cruise phase of flight. We'll be looking at power and fuel management, trimming the aircraft, use of the yaw damper, oxygen, anti-ice, as well as some initial considerations for descent planning. So let's hop into the cockpit and get on with the tutorial. So here we are, uh, climbing up to our target altitude of 10,000 feet. There is our uh, 200 foot altitude indicator warning. That's a non-standard feature uh, program for my aircraft. We're in flight level change mode climbing at 120 knots, but there we are at a uh, target altitude of 10,000 feet, so just level it out and we'll trim it. And we'll let the speed climb up above 130, and we were climbing at our maximum permitted torque there of uh, 1340, but we'll bring that down for the cruise now to about uh, 1250 or so. And once you've levelled off, uh, you climb with your uh, rudder trim still in to counteract P factor. But now we've levelled off, you can see on the slip indicator uh, that we were uh, skidding to the right a bit. So we'll just take that rudder trim out and centre it, and that should bring up the uh, slip indicator. And we, so we can see we're very nicely trimmed here at uh, 10,000 feet doing 140 knots, just slightly to the right of our GPS track. So you can do all of the climb uh, uh, with the prop set at uh, 2000 RPM. Uh, try and get the prop down to 2000 RPM fairly quickly after takeoff, uh, above 1000 feet. But if you haven't done it, uh, remember to do it during the climb or it's a shorter climb, uh, now's the time that you'd uh, want to bring the prop down to 2000 and that's as nicely configured for the cruise. Now the manual uh, does contain some performance tables uh, at the back and we'll just have a quick look at those. So there are two performance tables in the back of the uh, Kodiak manual uh, for the cruise performance. Um, a familiar format for you by now. Uh, on the left we have uh, maximum cruise torque and fuel flow at 2200 rpm and on the right the same except at 2000 rpm and you're going to want to know uh, the outside air temperature uh, and the altitude so in the example that we are uh, flying today we know the outside air temperature is minus four and we're going to be at 10,000 feet and we have a uh, prop setting of 2000 RPM. This also of course assumes that the inertial separator is in normal. It also assumes maximum aircraft weight of 7,255 uh, pounds. So if we look down here we can see 10,000 feet and we'll just line that up with uh, we could have to interpolate uh, between these two values. So there's a bit of a difference uh, and I've already done that, and I know that that is going to give me 1,529. Uh, that would be our maximum cruise torque. And same again for the fuel flow. We would just find the right column and the right row for the temperature, and that would give us 345 uh, pounds per hour. This is the second uh, cruise performance table at the back of the manual and the two tables here are basically uh, again going to give you a maximum cruise speed in uh, true air speed uh, for 2200 rpm or 2000 rpm so again looking at our example today 10,000 feet minus four uh, there isn't there's only a four knot difference between zero degrees and minus ten so just interpolating that would give us a maximum cruise speed of 174 knots and that is true airspeed not indicated. So now that we've had a quick look at those uh, performance tables uh, we can see that uh, our maximum at 10,000 feet the outside air temperature is minus 4 
and that would mean that our maximum permitted torque would be uh, 1530 at 2000 rpm and our maximum fuel consumption would be uh, 345 pounds per hour and we can see that we are well below that, we're at 1270 and we've got a fuel flow of 278 now. Uh, just in terms of endurance, the, there aren't tables for endurance, uh, but at this altitude, well at 12,000 feet, uh, you would uh, at maximum permitted, permitted torque and speed, you'd get um, approximately a thousand nautical miles. But if you reduce that to a more efficient uh, cruise setting, you'd get as much as 1,200 nautical miles. So that's obviously on the um, full load of fuel. Now you can see I haven't engaged the autopilot yet. Uh, and we'll cover autopilot in a separate tutorial. Uh, the use of the GFC 700 auto flight system. Um, but now is a good time that you could uh, think about putting autopilot in. Uh, typically, you wouldn't engage the autopilot in a real aircraft if you had any sort of pressure on the yoke at all or the aircraft wasn't in a trim position. So you either want it uh, to engage it when you're in a nicely trimmed climb or when you've reached the cruise. So we can pop the autopilot on now. And we just confirm that we've got that green AP indicated. Uh, we were already set up using the flight director to guide the climb with the GPS mode to give us uh, lateral guidance on our track and FLC to a target uh, altitude of 10,000 feet. Just a couple of other considerations when you're thinking about performance. The higher you climb, the better the performance you will get. You get marked improvement in performance and the Kodiak has a ceiling of 25,000 feet. Uh, however, above 12,500 feet, uh, you would need to engage the supplementary oxygen system, uh, which we can see down here. And it's very straightforward. Uh, you just turn it on, and if you've got it on, we will get also the indication of uh, how much capacity you've got left. You do also have um, uh, a light here to the right, and that should illuminate uh, once the uh, it senses that the uh, air pressure has dropped to a certain amount and that's indicating that you should uh, be engaging the, uh, the oxygen system. Now in the US it's required above supplementary oxygen, it is required above 12,500 feet. Different countries may have different requirements. And yes, the oxygen will deplete. It's a pretty large capacity, uh, particularly if it's just a pilot and a co-pilot uh, drawing on it. If you had uh, eight passengers in the back, also on supplementary oxygen, you would uh, obviously deplete it more quickly. So that is a factor. Uh, I tend not to try and cruise above 12,000 feet. Uh, I think that's an optimal cruise height for longer, longer flights. Um, so we'll just pop that off for now. The other thing that uh, we haven't talked about uh, at all so far really is the consideration of icing. Uh, now this is something that you're going to have to think about on the ground, in the climb and in the cruise as well and constantly monitoring. And essentially whenever visible moisture is present, so you're in rain or in cloud and the temperature indicated outside air temperature is 4 degrees C Celsius or less, then you want to be engaging your ice protection systems. And the ice protection panel is here and it's got a number of elements. It's got the inertial particle separator and you would put that into the bypass. You have the uh, pedo static heat uh, system left and right. So there are two, two pedo tubes on the Kodiak 100 for redundancy for the two air data computers. And uh, you pop those on. Um, you've got a windshield heater, uh, a backup pump, uh, that is for the uh, surface prop fluid and then you have an ice light and that will illuminate uh, the wings to help see if icing has started to form on the wings at night and the final element is this dial here which is to activate the TKS uh, anti-ice and de-icing fluid and that system basically 
uh, Pumpsy, Glycol based uh, fluid uh, propriety but Glycol based fluid onto the leading edges of the wings and also onto the prop and that will at lower flow rates prevent ice accumulating but if set to maximum it will in fact uh, if ice has already accumulated it will uh, serve as a de-icer and it will break the bond between the ice and the surfaces and cause the ice to come off and it is by all accounts very effective. In the Kodiak at the minute this is only modelled to basically be off or maximum. You don't have uh, access to the intermediary settings. There is a reservoir of uh, de-iced fluid. Uh, you can see that here in the G1000 MFD under engine and M system soft keys and you can see ice protection and we've got 16 gallons and that will gradually deplete over time uh, you should get uh, at least 3 hours of fluid out of uh, the tank on maximum settings probably a bit less than that in real life but 3 hours seems to be what you would likely get uh, the simulator I've never tested it to maximum. Another consideration uh, you probably already have popped it on in the climb again it's one of those things you want to do uh, along with around about the same time you bring your prop down to 2000 rpm but you want to think about putting the yaw damper on. The yaw damper is uh, third axis of the auto flight system. Uh, it should be engaged in all modes of flight other than takeoff and landing. Uh, and essentially what it does is it uh, dampens, as the name suggests, it dampens inputs from the rudder, reducing corkscrewing motion in the uh, tail of the aircraft, which makes for a more comfortable, stable flight, and it is activated by this YD button here on the GFC 700 panel. So you just click that, and you get a little light there, and you confirm it is indicated here. Now I've just popped the autopilot off, um, talk a little bit about uh, trimming the aircraft and obviously trimming is something that you're going to have to have done uh, before takeoff and during your climb. It's a constant process of managing trim, uh, but we'll just talk a little bit, a bit, a little bit more about it. Um, now elevator trim is the most important and there are two ways of adjusting elevator trim. There's the electric trim switch here on the yoke. Trim up and down, like so. And there is the trim wheel here itself. Now, if you're using the virtual cockpit controls, you might get slightly finer control from the electric trim switch than the trim wheel. However, if you're using an external peripheral, you can set it up so that they can have different sensitivities and in my case I have the electric trim switch set up on a corresponding switch on my Honeycomb Alpha Yoke and on my Honeycomb Bravo I have the trim wheel set up and I have that set up so it provides much finer control and I find it a lot easier to trim the aircraft using that when I'm just trying to make those final little fine adjustments it is very difficult to trim the Kodiak uh, in live weather when you've got wind gusts and thermals. Um, it won't, like most aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will not return to a stable trim condition after a gust. It seems to get away from its uh, trim position. That's, a, that's an issue with the Microsoft Flight Simulator flight model. Um, so you do have to, if you're going to hand fly it completely, then you know just be ready to work that trim wheel as you're going along. Now we also have uh, the rudder and the elevator trim. Now the rudder trim is switches are here and uh, the sorry the aileron trim switches are there. The rudder trim switch you'll be well familiar with from your takeoff because it's essential to set it during takeoff. Uh, aileron is much less commonly used but if you are again hand flying the aircraft uh, and you've got a bit of rudder trim in for whatever reason you may need to counteract that with some aileron trim but as you can see here 
I do have a lot of trim in. I've just got a little bit of nose up uh, and no aileron or rudder and it's uh, holding in. In fact, I can probably take that uh, nose up out. I seem to be wanting to climb a little bit. And there we are. Very stable. But of course, it's easy. I'm now just about to start flying over water. I'm in clear weather preset, so it's a lot easier to trim the aircraft in these conditions. For figuring out what are good trim position settings, I'd recommend using the input viewer, which I've shown before. You will see trim indicated, so the trim is showing we've got our trim values in the right on the box, so we've actually got nine uh, units of Elevator trim in, I'll just uh, adjust my trim using my Bravo trim wheel. So maybe we'll see, try it on 7, see if that will can't quite get it to 8. Yeah, so you'll see the numbers indicated in the box there, but also uh, you get these um, X mark is actually showing the trim position. You can actually see we've got one unit of rudder trim in there as well, I'm taking that out using again the trim button on my yoke to get that zeroed. So this is a really useful tool actually uh, for making those fine fine trim settings and learning uh, what's the best way uh, to trim your aircraft. So just returning to uh, power and fuel management uh, whatever cruise power you set at obviously you have to res continue to respect your ITT uh, limits and your NG limits so 740 and 101.6 uh, but uh, we're obviously well below that and really depends on uh, how quickly you want to get where you're going the fuel flow is a good way of uh, gauging it uh, I tend not to fly with the fuel flow uh, in cruise depending on what altitude I'm at uh, higher than 340 pounds per hour um, but you can basically fly as you as you wish, as long as you don't exceed uh, any of your limits. So our final considerations now, we're cruising along and we are starting to come up on our top of descent, uh, which the G1000 has calculated uh, for our descent down into John Wayne, uh, Kilo Sierra November Alpha, which is... 39 nautical miles away at the moment. There's lots of ways of calculating descent. Uh, I'm not going to go into the different uh, the different methodologies for doing that. The G1000 does make it easy to do that. Um, uh, you can also use vertical navigation VNAV, uh, which is one of the features on the GFC 700 auto flight system, and that will. Uh, take you down and this can be very useful if you're flying an instrument approved procedure which has a number of altitude constraints on it uh, but normally it's not necessary to use VNAV to plan your descent uh, just you need to keep an eye out for that top of descent now in the standard aircraft um, that's the only indication that you'll get in the real aircraft you will get uh, an oral announcement which is a vertical track and I have been able to modify uh, my setup using spad.net so I do get that enunciation which is quite useful uh, but certainly uh, when you're coming up on top of descent or your uh, if you're perhaps using an external application like little nav map that will give you a top of descent as well and it's going to keep an eye out for that you can set timers uh, anything that helps uh, make sure that you don't miss that important point and then you can start to consider your descent planning which is one of the things we'll be covering in a following tutorial so we'll just let the aircraft fly up to top of descent here and without going into all the ins and outs of it I will actually uh, I'll change my altitude select bring that down to 4000 and there was vertical track enunciated and if I arm VNAV now I'll 
I'll get VPOS indicated. In white, so he's armed. And when I hit Todd, you can see VPOS is turned into reverse video, flashing green, and I've got suddenly a bunch of indicators, track indicators, in, uh, appeared on the altitude tape. Uh, one of those is a target uh, target um, descent rate, which is this one, and this one is the uh, a deviation indicator from your track. Now, this isn't a VNAV tutorial, I'm not going to get into that, but what I just did want to do was show you uh, one thing for consideration of your power setting in cruise. If you are going to cruise power settings higher than 1300, you're definitely going to have to watch your speed. Uh, in the descent as it will start to start to climb up and you may have to reduce your power so one advantage of cruising at uh, lower torque settings is that there's no danger of you over speeding the aircraft once you start to go into a standard sort of three degree uh, descent flight path the aircraft will speed up without you having to add any extra extra power but it will stabilize as we have here stabilizing at 100 yeah, just creeping up onto 172 knots, um, and that's fine. Uh, we wouldn't want to go much faster than that. In fact, uh, I think our maximum at 10,000 feet would be 174 knots. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video on the cruise portion of your flight. There's also other aspects to managing the aircraft and cruise I've not covered, such as weather, ETC, and traffic. Uh, it's really beyond the scope of this video, but there are other great resources available on YouTube covering those topics. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, please do leave a comment and uh, check out the other videos in this tutorial series if you haven't already. I uh, have designed them so that they should be watched in sequence. And, uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.